Hey guys, so I had a couple minutes uh, before I move into my next thing. I actually, one of the things that's really exciting, I am teaching online, teaching foreign languages online. Now that uh, my graduate semester is over, I did a summer semester, I am back in the working world and doing that sort of thing, and I am teaching uh, high school online. So that's why you see I'm decked out with these awesome headgear and whatnot. But one of the things that I was thinking about was uh, the idea of a maintenance mechanism. A maintenance mechanism is basically the idea that in life we get busy, right? So at different points in your life you have to um, hustle and do more for work. You may have to even do more work. Um, you may be too absorbed in one thing or another and therefore it doesn't leave very much time. Uh, for intensive language learning, right? You may not be able to go sign up for a class, <clears throat> excuse me, you may not be able to get involved in any sort of activity, and you may not obviously be able to study for an hour a day uh, in, in, your, in the foreign language that's your target, uh, and especially if you're working to maintain multiple languages while, say, learning a new one. So one of the things that I practice, particularly when I get busy, is the idea of having a maintenance mechanism. What a maintenance mechanism is supposed to do is essentially allow you to continue practicing your foreign language even while you're busy. I guess the, the essential key to a good maintenance mechanism is that it can be done in just 15 minutes. That's right. I said, boom, 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 15 minutes. So a maintenance mechanism basically allows you, no matter how busy you are, no matter how inundated with things at work or wherever, you're still able to get in a little bit of your language practice and either make a little progress or maintain your level so that you don't fall behind. Uh, this past summer, I was involved in um, my graduate school courses, and that takes up a tremendous amount of time. You're doing pretty heavy readings, you're doing lots of problem sets, You've got papers, all sorts of things. And linguistics is an interesting field uh, because it really takes an approach to language that includes almost every single other field that exists in the world. So uh, much like a math or a pure sciences, you're going to have lots of problem sets. Much like humanities, you're going to have papers and you're going to have heavy readings. Um, much like the social sciences, you're also going to have heavy readings and presentations where you analyze certain phenomena. So, you know, linguistics is a great field, but it often involves a wide variety of skills and a wide variety of uh, working modalities. And so in some ways, it can become kind of difficult to just like, say, get into a groove of only problem sets or get into a groove of only papers or get into a group of only readings and presentations. One of the things that I did this summer, I decided that I was going to reinvigorate my Italian. And so at the beginning of this year, before classes started, I really got into studying Italian. I was maybe able to get in an hour a day, um, 15 minutes at the least. Even when I'm not busy, I love uh, maintenance mechanisms because because I'm juggling multiple languages, right? I, um, I speak French and Indonesian. Um, I'm also a certified Latin teacher. I know Old English. I'm trying to maintain those languages while reinvigorating Italian, uh, a language that I know, uh, um, that I, excuse me, that I've studied years ago, uh, but that has, it's been a while since I've really uh, used it. Since I'm trying to reinvigorate that language and I'm throwing my resources there, I can give 15 minutes to all of my languages um, and, and then study more of any one particular language that I need to. So what that probably looked like in, in May was, um, you know, sitting roughly 15 minutes of each of those languages, which uh, each of my other languages, which took about an hour and 15, hour and a half, uh, including Italian in that mix. Um, and then I could continue studying Italian uh, throughout the day if I so pleased. So keep that in mind. Uh, maintenance mechanisms aren't only good for when you don't have time. They're good for even when you do have time, right? Um, so yeah, one of the things that I did essentially going into um, June was I built in uh, a maintenance mechanism for Italian and I would try to carve out 15 minutes uh, every day, sometimes even every other day 
in order to get in a little bit of Italian practice. And it was awesome because it served as a little break sometimes for my studies and I can make sure I could get that in. Now in the tail end of uh, my course is about a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, that last week, week and a half, two weeks, I probably studied no Italian uh, and that's fine. I needed to take that time off to focus on my finals, but because I had been studying up to that point, and now I'm studying again after that point, I don't really feel like I've skipped a beat. What basically I do is I find a single program or a single method of language learning, and I stick to that one thing. That's recently been Rosetta Stone for me. I'm going to do a video on how Rosetta Stone just all of a sudden, not actually really all of a sudden, but in a sense, all of a sudden became ridiculously awesome. I was able to get onto the platform, study for 15 minutes in a um, regimented way, do the activities. When the activities were done, I could move on. That's essentially what is the most important thing about a language mechanism, being able to do something encapsulated, being able to fulfill that activity, get that practice in, have it be done, and move on to whatever activities are that are required of you for your work or school or whatever you're doing. This summer, I would sign on to the uh, Rosetta Stone platform. I would do a 15 minute unit. Uh, so usually like a 10 minute and a five minute or do a five minute and do some reading. And then I would move on and I would enjoy my day while being able to keep up my Italian. That's all I've got for you today, but I wanted to just drop a little bit of knowledge on the maintenance mechanism. It is one of the most important concepts, I'd say, in language learning, because that is, I think, where a lot of language learners, especially people juggling multiple languages, fall into uh, a trap, right? They're not able to maintain languages they've learned, or uh, they're able to make progress, but then quickly lose that progress by forgetting by all of a sudden getting busy and say taking three months off, right? Uh, instead of being able to just carve out little bits of time that allow you to maintain your language and skills. All right, guys, go take down some tongues.